Hey guys, Pastor Joe here. It's Tuesday. It's time for our uh, weekly video e-blast. Uh, welcome to this time. I won't take but a few minutes of your time, but I do want to talk to you about some very important things. One is I just got through. We just finished a service for a very precious sister in the Lord, Barbara Jordan, and what an honor it was to be able to carry, carry out and conduct uh, the service for our precious sister in the Lord. She's a member of our Magnolia campus. Love Jesus and uh, is at home with the Lord today along with many others that we love and care about have gone on before us. And I really believe with all my heart, I'm, I want you to take me very seriously. I believe with all my heart that it will not be that long until we are all gathered together. I am a very firm believer in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you were to take the time to look at the world around you right now through the lens of the Bible, you're going to discover, well, the world has moved in line with prophetic passages of the Word of God like at no other time in Scripture. I mean, it's estimated today that, uh, that there's tremendous persecution, as Jesus said there would be in the last days for the church. Even though persecution is what I would call moderate to mild in America, it's going to increase in days to come. Especially if the country makes some decisions in the days ahead of us, we're going to see more increased um, rejection of the Bible, of God and the Word in every social circle. I mean, we've already moved him out of colleges and schools and universities. We've moved God out of, out of the courtrooms and pretty much just relegated him to the church buildings. The Bible says the one thing that will happen in the end times is that persecution will arise against the church. It's already happened. I mean, over 245 million Christians are, are living in places right now where they're experiencing high levels of persecution. Over 4,000, like 43, 4,400 Christians uh, in, in this recent year have been killed for their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Close to 2,000 churches and other Christian buildings have been attacked all around the world because of their commitment to follow Christ. Over 3,000 believers are detained today under arrest uh, without trial, in prison, and sentenced to prison for, for just for simply being believers in Jesus Christ. There's revivals that are happening around the world in, in, in incredible ways. Uh, the, in China, the underground church, in Iran, there's a tremendous move of God among the Muslims. Jesus is, is being preached and many people are coming to Christ. Uh, in Cuba, where I've been personally and seen what's going on there, many people are coming to Christ. So uh, Iraq, many people are coming to Christ. I have friends who do ministry in Iraq. My friends and pastors in Eastern Europe that do ministry there telling me that God is doing some marvelous things and many people are coming to Christ. The scriptures speak of the second coming. You can't get around it if you're going to read your Bible. It's over and over and over again. One verse out of every 25 verses speaks of the second coming of Jesus Christ. I mean, there's not one single book in the New Testament that does not refer to the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's prophesied. It gives detail. It gives descriptions of the days and the times and the turmoils and the situations that will be experienced. The second coming receives more attention uh, in the Word of God than any other doctrine in all of the Bible, Old or New Testament. There was a great deal of prophecy given the first coming of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, and there's a great deal of Old Testament prophecy concerning his second coming. Seventeen Old Testament books, as a matter of fact, talk about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ for his kingdom in the last days. There's one whole New Testament book, the book of uh, Revelation, given over to prophecy and explaining what will be taking place in the last of days. We've been preaching in our church a sermon series called "In the Last Days." It's from Second Timothy chapter three. Has been our chapter three has been our, our premise for that passage. We're talking about all the things that would be happening in the world that we are, we live in in a very descriptive way. Is, manner is given in the, in the in the Bible about what these days would look like. Right now, listen to this. Right now, the Bible has been preached in every nation of the earth, almost translated into about every tongue in the earth. It is a, it's, it's one of the most noticeable, it's one of the most uh, unmistakable signs that we are near the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, this gospel shall be preached in every nation. Well, we're in that day, the first time in history, we can honestly see that that has taken place. It's, that's probably one of the number one signs of Jesus' return, but one of the most overlooked. Another big, great uh, sign of scriptures is in Israel and how that it would become a nation, be restored from among the other nations. That never happened. Jesus was, was talking to the people of Israel in his day. They were in bondage to the Romans. It hadn't happened then, and it didn't happen until 1948. Jesus talked about a generation of the last days that would see that day. And then when Trump, I think was a real key prophetic thing, signed the document to, make, to, to receive Jerusalem, uh, accept Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, and to move the American embassy there, 
these are these are the days, folks, that we need to get our eyes open. But the Bible said it, it wouldn't be that way, that people in the last days would become cold, they would become hard-hearted, and they, their, their love for Jesus would, would wane. And unfortunately, that's where the majority of the church seems to be lulled to sleep. I just want to remind you again today, Jesus is coming. And he's coming sooner than what most of us think. I hope you're ready, because the only way to be ready is to know Jesus Christ personally. I hope this message encourages you. I hope it helps you open your eyes, take a look at the world around you through a biblical lens, read what the Bible has to say, open your heart to what God's doing in the world today, be a part of his last great move in the planet because you love Jesus with all your heart, mind, and soul. Commit yourself to love God, love people, and reach the world. Well, God bless you. There's a lot going on. You'll be seeing about it in the newsletters. You'll be hearing about it from other announcements. And in the Wednesday Word, we'll also be telling you about some of the things that are coming up. But I love you. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you this Sunday as we talk about part three of In the Last Days.